I figured I'd call today's show How Cash Now. Many of you may have lost a job or find yourself shorthanded. Here's one thing you can do. It's not too pretty. Sometimes it doesn't smell too good. But you can pay your rent or your mortgage or your car or whatever. Whatever you need paid. There's a scrapyard about seven or eight miles down the highway and I'm going to run some routes scavenging, mostly dumpster diving. It's uh, 316, 317. They close at five. I want to get there at least 15 minutes early. So we're going to call it an hour and a half of scavenge action, scavenge labor hours action. See what we can find. I'm going to predict the amount of money I make in between $5 and $500. <laughs> How's that for a prediction? Of course, the most important part right now on a Friday, if you were cashless, would be scrap metal that you can sell immediately to the scrapyard rather than things you might sell on eBay. But there's always gonna be usable stuff. There's a whole bag of shoes. They're, they're well worn though. See all the cans in there? Cans alone would be guaranteed cash, but it really slows you down. So I would recommend skipping that. Of course, if you're starving to death, go ahead and take them cans and get you a meal, you know. I still would recommend skip them and find better stuff but we'll see how it works out with my can skipping it's a good video to see how it works I ditch this uh, piece of tin later. Oh, that's a nice piece of aluminum right there. Let's just see how it goes. I may just strap that on top of my pile at the end, see how it goes. If you've never done this before, of course, you won't know where the dumpsters are at. So that's definitely gonna slow you down. But, uh, any apartment complex, this is actually a, a condominium townhouse complex, but uh, any kind of multi-dwelling, any kind of small business, they all have dumpsters. Well, some places are different. Dumpsters might be locked. They might use a lot of trash cans, blah, blah, blah. But you just have to see how it is. Where you are, where you are. Some cities will allow people to throw stuff out on the curb and they'll come and pick it up on the curb. So you might live somewhere where you can just do a lot of curb picking. There's like a Scrap and Pallet Man and uh, Taco Stacks. That's two channels. I'll link up down in the description. They do a lot of curb picking. If you want to check that out, they're they're pretty good at that. I can't do that where I live. They don't really allow that kind of stuff here. I mean, occasionally, I'll see it. But... E-waste Ben is another curbside junkie he uh 
has all the he lives in Australia he has all the hard rubbish days they call them mapped out and stuff they have certain times where people just throw stuff on the curb and he goes out and just has a good old time so I'll link his channel down there too he's real good at that not the sort of thing I wanted to find <laughs> making a video like this but typically I would just skip it I might work that motor out of there but uh lots of folks are in cars and trucks so of course you would snatch that up so we'll see how it goes it's one of those produce crates I would normally take that wood crate there but We're making a cash now video, so I'll concentrate on cash now, not cash later. Plus car detail shop is hopping. COVID-19 ease downs plus nice weather. I don't think I've ever seen this business so busy before. <laughs> mental note to car detailers don't park it under a tree that shiny old car has got a giant bird splatter on it windshield and the hood <laughs>
I would normally take that stuff back there, check it out online or put it in the free tail store, but it's not what today's video is about, so let's get down the road. I'll come back and get that later. I know a lot of the comments and questions that will show up on this video in the comment section, so I'll try to answer them before. Um, so this can be done on foot it can be done on a bicycle it can be done on a motorcycle or a scooter it can be done in a car it can be done on a truck There's actually advantages and disadvantages to every one of those methods. But of course, however you're doing it is gonna affect the sort of things you're after and your situation. Right now, I'm portraying someone who needs to make cash in an hour. So we're taking cash in an hour items. Of course, the smaller you are, the quicker you are, and the less visible you are. I highly, I would highly say do not drag around a trailer in it with a truck doing this you will attract all sorts of attention and be told to leave all sorts of places I'm entering the fringe of the gravy zone with uh, 40 minutes left or so. There's some Apple uh, iPhone boxes in there. Actually, you can sell on eBay and stuff. <clears throat> so the scrapyard's about four or five miles away. And in between where I'm at now and the scrapyard is a, is a university. Of course, they're not in school right now, but college towns, universities, even small colleges will have tons and tons and tons of off-campus housing. That's a great area to target. <clears throat> okay, so that, that bike's all tore up. The wheel's bent, that's probably garbage probably garbage as well yeah the back wheels all bent up looks like someone ran over them in a car with a car so that's something if you're in a truck of course you would take a few seconds and snatch up it's not worth a whole lot but 
So if you're in a car and a truck, of course, you're going to be burning a ton more gas. And those bikes would be like gas money. Of course, when I try to make a video like this, I find <laughs> one big bulky piece of tin after the next that's not worth hardly anything. Sometimes you may wonder why why I park where I park particularly when I have to put stuff in my buckets from here it's because the lay of the land you can't really see it on GoPro I can't be parking on slants and inclines and declines I gotta park the right way or else my bike will fall off the kickstand okay so some decent little pieces of scrap finally nice heavy heavyweight little things it's always good I'm gonna get top heavy over here. So of course I'm doing this and I only have an hour and a half. So let's plan a roll and what I'm doing. But you can imagine if you went out in the morning, I want I want to show how much stuff can be found in a short amount of time. But if you went out you know, early, take your time and have all day you know you can make multiple trips to the scrapyard okay so that's all tin that's a piece of aluminum So I guess those purses I found earlier, they look like they're monogrammed, personal. I'm not sure, I'll check that out later, but. That, <clears throat> that painting I found there too, had a $90 price tag on it. So, I really don't have that much value in scrap metal, but. The end tally, where I said five between five dollars and five hundred, it, I guess it kind of depends on how you how you add things up, you know. You are now entering the gravy zone. Unfortunately, I've only got about 20 minutes left. 
be sure I have to make a beeline for the scrapyard. I probably shouldn't be picking up farkles, but here a farkle, there a farkle. Oh, I'm gonna try something. Might not be too easy. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> sheesh. I saw another farkle around here somewhere. There he is. They usually don't travel alone. They're a species known for their social skills, social structure. Oh boy, I got a whole pack of them. With some farkles, they have camouflage when you look at them with the sun. So lots of times you gotta just to break through their camouflage mechanism. You got to uh, just catch them at the right angle. See that one right there? Oh boy, that's super, super glow. Yeah. His scales are just happen to be right angle to the sun I'm giving him away otherwise he's pretty well camouflaged sometimes they'll try to make themselves look like uh, little pieces of gum that's been squished down there and little pieces of plastic and Okay, there's a five farkle. Let's try to sneak up on him. Sometimes you gotta be quick. Don't let your shadow, don't let your shadow get on him. That'll spook him. Sometimes you just gotta get up, get him real quick like that. Five farkle. Sometimes they'll try to make themselves look like a bottle cap or a piece of foil or an oil stain. They're, they're masters of camouflage. Paper shredder. Ah, oh, it's a big one. Are you the manager? Yeah. All right. I've been doing it here for about 11 years. They've been on me about stuff. Yeah. People making a mess and stuff. All right. Thank you. You mind if I swing by every now and then? Just I'll keep it. I'll keep it clean and stuff. After hours. After hours. Yeah. Don't do that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate. Yeah. I appreciate it. I'll help keep the place clean too. Hey, thanks a lot. So that was a good example. I'm across the street in a different place now, but you now you can imagine if you're in a, in a big vehicle, particularly if you're dragging a trailer, how much uh, attention you will attract. <laughs> you would just be having people all day long giving you a stink eye. Lots of times what they're worried about, besides a needle like that sitting there, that's people illegally dumping, you know. You don't even know if that couch came from this complex, you know. They see people driving around with a truck and a trailer full of stuff, and they... Lots of times they will just jump to the conclusion that you're dumping garbage on their property, and they will freaking out on you. You just want to uh, avoid... Avoid all contact, for the most part, with people just get in and out no standing around 
if you want to clean stuff up do it later somewhere else unfortunately I'm running out of time I wanted to get a little deeper into the gravy zone but I think already you can get the picture of what I'm trying to say bicycle that would be oh no oh, I almost dumped it Whew. that would be more gas money hey look there's the stuff I'm looking for now we're cooking now we're cooking this is what I was hoping to find a lot of today brassola a scrapper's treat More gas money if you wanted it. Got about five minutes left. There's a big old TV. That's the older one. The older ones will have some chunky little pieces of scrap metal. That's a little transformers. It's got some good weight to it. Scrap yards here. Don't take the screens. Hey, I think that's a might be a plasma. But uh, that's the scrap back there. Some more gas running. You take that home and scrap that out for the circuit boards and the little bits of aluminum and. The, Copper transformers, a little bit of gold in there. If you look down in my description, I have some videos of scrap enlisted. One is scrapping TVs like that. Oh, well, not exactly like that. That was a plasma, I do believe. Oh, they basically have the same kind of stuff inside of them. Stay. There is a little bag in here, unless I need to take my sunglasses off. <clears throat> oh. It's the home of a something. Was it a trumpet, clarinet, or something? What was it some kind of musical instrument? I wanted to say home of a trombone, so a rhyme. Well, I'm out of time, but uh, I don't think that's what it was.
it's 16 minutes to five. I actually wanted to be pulling into the scrapyard in a couple minutes. So I'm gonna have to uh, do a little driving. It's rush hour, so uh, see if I get down to the scrapyard in time. And of course I'm stuck behind the slowest driver in the world. Uh, my mind was on autopilot there. I, I forgot about COVID-19 rush hour. <laughs> it's a little different. I got five minutes to spare. I might, that might have been record time getting here. I took my rush hour shortcuts with absolutely no cars on the side streets. The surway was extremely fast. All right, let's see what this is worth. Let's see how we did here. 79 pounds of tin. Yeah, a terrible price of two and a half cents a pound for $1.98. Pound of aluminum breakage for nickel. Another five pounds of tin for 12 cents. Uh, number two insulated copper, one pound for four, hey, 45 cents. That's, let's come back up 45 cents, that's a good price. Pound of Christmas lights, 12 cents. Uh, three pounds at 12 cents, 36 cents. Pound of brass. Hey, look at that. Brass came up 10 cents again for a dollar ten. Total four dollars seven cents. So that's not a whole lot of money. But I still got those boots to pick up and those purses and a little uh, screen here I'll throw in the free tail store. A little black and decker bag. I guess I'll throw that in the free tail store too. So uh that's about as bad as it would get. That's about the the bottom line. Went back for that stuff. I didn't have the heart to leave that guy behind. <laughs> He's so cute. Uh, I looked closely. I don't see any funk of any sorts. But uh, under there, I missed a DVD player in my rush to get to the scrapyard. Crunched for time. I skipped that. That's a little Blu-ray player. So uh, that probably works. I'm going to take that home and check it out. That's something I can immediately sell at a pawn shop or what have you. What's up, Chris? Works just fine. Not too shabby. You gotta watch out, Grizz. It's very important work I'm doing, Grizz. You gotta watch out, Grizz. <laughs> you always in every, every time, huh, Grizz? Huh? You like the camera? My name's Grizz and I like the camera. Hi, Grizz. Let's see what's going on at the free test store. <laughs> Very much stuff. I figure some stuff will be gone by now. It might be, I just don't notice. Hmm. Oh, that says 69. Let me bring my glasses. Not 89. That's not bad. Tempted to keep that for myself, but I just got way too much stuff. It's kind of got a nice look to it. So I definitely was counting on making more than four dollars and some change in scrap metal, but uh, I didn't get any vacuum cleaner cords. Vacuum cleaner cords would have put me over my five dollars, but uh, it just depends on how you look at it. You know, four dollars and change and scrap metal. And if you really want to, you can sell that for a little bit. You can probably sell that dog at a garage sale too. And you could definitely sell these boots and these. I don't know what the deal is with these purses. If that's a personal monogram, I don't know what the deal is for sure. 
I don't see any brand names, but uh, those are nice though, whatever they are. These you could definitely sell. Those are nice and clean. They got a little neat look to them. What do you think? Ah, oh, they want to know the size on the Pacific. 40. Made in Italy. Hey now. Wait a second. I'm gonna take those home and run those through the internet. I didn't know I was dealing with Italian boots. Italian. <laughs> Italian, Italian, Italian. Italian. I don't think I've ever heard it pronounced ooh Italian or oh Italian. You come back with me guys. Now there's also a couple more cords in there that I missed along with that DVD player or Blu-ray player and our monitor. They got there like so. Nice shady spot to eat my lunch. What do you think about that? Oh no. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Not too bad, not too bad. That's about as bad as it gets, I was trying to say earlier, about as bad as it gets for scrap metal. They didn't give me any sauce. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed the show. And as always, thanks for watching. Huh?